Michelle Prince, founder and CEO of Performance Publishing Group, making a difference one story at a time. We'll be shining the light on successful founders, entrepreneurs, business owners, and leaders that are getting results and making a difference. We'll talk about how they built their businesses, are creating movements, and leveraging the power of authority in their own lives. Be sure to stick around to the end of the show and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. This is Michelle Prince with the Power of Authority Spotlight, where we shine the light on successful entrepreneurs, business owners, leaders, founders, people that are doing extraordinary things, making a difference along the way. And our author today is, uh, our guest today is an author that is absolutely doing that, making a difference. And I can't wait to introduce you to him. First, just a quick message from our sponsor, Performance Publishing Group. If you've ever thought about writing a book, Why haven't you done it? Get your story out there. Everyone has a story. Every story matters. But we need to get our stories out there so that we can really leverage them, build our influence, build our authority. If you want to check out Performance Publishing Group, grab a free strategy call at performancepublishinggroup.com. That's performancepublishinggroup.com. All right. Let me introduce you to our guest today, David Munson Jr. He is a disruptive, active inventor and advocate with ways to make the world a better place. He's president of Get Real Alliance, which focuses on viewing our planet holistically and providing solutions that secure the evidence and offer a good path for sustainable prosperity. He is also a published author and wrote the book, Get Real, A Positive Solution to Climate Change. David has had success as an inventor, which has allowed him as an inventor not to be constrained by immediate profit need, but to aim higher. His professional focus is visionary to end war, violence, starvation, and create sustainability. He has been lucky enough to have a full range of experiences like hauling square hay bales out on a hot Texas day, like this summer for us, uh, while also being in the West Wing of the White House. His specialties include insight, rapid reading, and information comprehension, disruptive invention, diagnostic mechanical ability, public speaking, and driving just about anything from fast cars to draft horses. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you so much. So glad to be here and to share the good news that we can make the world carbon negative, actually lower carbon dioxide levels, while we continue to enjoy the use of oil and gas. That's right, people. We don't have to give up the modern way of life in the West in the name of climate change while doing nothing to rein in India and China which are rapidly increasing their carbon emission. So my program that I line out in the book can make the world carbon negative while the Chinese keep burning all that coal. But I offer inventions in the book and through my invention company, FY Group LLC, to make the world better and cut out coal burning, which is so harmful. Because believe it or anyway, so I've got a lot to say about it. And uh, let's dive right in because I want to get to we're, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but I want to make sure we get to the book because this is something that I know is a, a catalyst. It's 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 continuing on the the mission that you've been driving towards for a long time, but but taking all that information, putting it into a book. So give us an overview of what Get Real is all about and the purpose behind it. Well. Get Real kind of describes me as a person. I internally debate or externally debate all issues to come up with the best rational answer to make a difference in the world. And uh, I really can't stand irrational thought. So, like, I can't stand the idea that we can, quote, solve the climate crisis by cutting emissions in the west while the east emits more Mm. and you can't lower carbon dioxide levels by reducing emissions all that does is slow the rise sequestration removing carbon dioxide from the air is done by photosynthesis it's part of god's amazing cycle where co2 gets emitted to the air and consumed by the plants and then as plants rot or plants are eaten by animals, they emit carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful cycle going around and around. And 
but we've perverted the cycle by destroying the health of the soil and causing deserts to grow globally, reducing the amount of photosynthesis. So the reason why carbon dioxide levels have gone up since the industrial age is not man's emissions, mm -hmm. but the plowing of the North American prairie destroying an incredible carbon sink that had stored a huge amount of carbon, more carbon than in the air, was in the soil and plants of the North American prairie, where once hundreds of millions of buffalo lived, recycling the grass and turning it back into fertile soil as they process the grass, emitted manure that becomes rich soil. So. We're just on the wrong path. We've got to change our ways and restore the earth to health. Mm -hmm. So listeners can go to getrealalliance.org, see my video documentary, have a link to get the book on Amazon and uh, in whatever form they want, whether audio book or paperback or Kindle. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, I strongly recommend the book because the audiobook is 12 hours. <laughs> the video documentary is an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So that shows you how much less content is in Absolutely. the video documentary than the book. So if you're really interested in digging in and learning a lot about the soil and remineralizing and changing practices and changing the way we manage forests, I strongly recommend the book. You'll be intrigued with it. It is definitely, there's so much great information in there and I definitely recommend it. I'm curious though, David, how did you, how did you get so fascinated with this, with climate change? And how did you even come to the conclusion that that's what's really causing this and not the emissions? Well, I personally believe that God guides my life. I don't believe my life is a random walk and I don't believe my life is without purpose. Mm. And I've had some incredible connections and learned about some books that are not well known and read books. I was a big reader. We bought a big ranch when I was 21 years old. And I lived out of the ranch and worked hard outside and came in at night and read books. Because mm -hmm. back in the 80s, we didn't even have good TV out in the country. <laughs> And uh, anyways, I've learned a lot. I read a great book that's out of print called Survival of Civilization, which was written back in the late 70s by an engineer. As an engineering student, you learn about mathematical functions. Mm -hmm. And he basically talked entirely about exponential growth of CO2, of debt, and population as being unsustainable. And uh, at that time, global warming had yet to become the flavor of the month. Right. And in fact, in the 70s, most climate specialists were studying the trend of a slight cooling and the fact that we're overdue for a glaciation and an ice age saying that we were headed back to an ice age. And sadly, climate scientists are not engineers. Mm -hmm. They haven't had engineering courses. One of the most important sciences is a practical science called thermodynamics, which talks about how heat turns into power mm. and how systems work. And uh, in thermodynamics, you you put a box around a system and study it with the inputs and outputs. And so the earth is a system. We have heat coming into the tropics where it never gets to be winter. And we have the polar regions that have long cold winters with no sunlight where they just emit heat out to space 24 hours a day. Mm. And um, so ice ages, actually require the earth to warm up mm. because you have to evaporate more water out of the ocean heat equals evaporation 
So this idea that some misguided climate people have, oh, the earth has to cool on average to have an ice. No, it needs to heat up at the tropics and be actually warmer at the poles because warmer air holds more moisture so you can have more snow. Wow. When it gets really cold, you can't have a snow because there's no moisture in the air. Anyway, where the polar vortex forms in the middle of the country the last few winters, mm -hmm. like when we had snowmageddon, yeah, with the cold weather coming down, that's where the glaciers formed in the last ice age. Wow. Ice was a mile deep in Kansas. That's unbelievable. But to have an ice age, you have to melt less snow than falls. You have to have a net buildup. Mm -hmm. But we put so much pollution into the air that snow is not clean. It's loaded with dark particles, which serve as little miniature solar collectors absorbing solar heat and melting the snow surrounding the dark particles. That's why when you go skiing, you get wet when you fall down on a sunny day. Mm -hmm because the surface of the snow is melted and everybody knows skiing on fresh powder is tons of fun, mm -hmm. but the snow gets crusty because the surface of the snow melts and then more snow falls and it, it gets melted and refrozen. So you have that icy layer uh -huh. anyway. So yeah. solar, solar heat is the reason why snow melts. Air yeah. temperature is like, and also ran, it's not even really a factor. Everybody knows that snow melts in the sun and stays around under a shade tree. Mm -hmm. Or when you go to the mountains and you see the shady side of the mountain has snow all summer. Mm -hmm. Anyway. The whole just, topic is so fascinating. Like, I mean, even just listening to you, I'm like, clearly I did not pay attention class <laughs> the way you did. And But you are a scientist, you're an inventor. And, and I love though that you your perspective on it, because is it safe to say, is this a controversial view of this or? No, it's the or, truth or pretty is, much a common, common view. The reason why I call my organization Get Real Alliance mm -hmm. is because I'm for rational thought. And it's irrational to say that air temperature matters if it's less than 1% of the reason why the snow melts. Okay. That's a good point. So. Anyway, but the left wants to make climate a religion that demands sacrifice in the name of, quote, saving the earth. So all they focus on is emissions and cutting emissions and sharply lowering the quality of life for people on earth yeah. is, a, is a, quote, sacrifice worth making for this existential threat. In my book, I never spend one minute trying to say that CO2 is an existential problem or not. I just say some people think it is. There are big problems that are really serious, like growing deserts, the fact that we're losing 10 million tons of topsoil every day globally, and the fact that we're paving over so much farmland. Mm -hmm. So all of those trends are very serious and contribute to rising carbon dioxide level. And our soil is so demineralized because it has been 11,000 years since the last ice age, ground up lots of minerals and spread them globally with the wind. Right. So my program is to remineralize the earth using the best rock on earth, which is basalt which is kind of the foundation of life on land because mm. it has all the minerals in it. And it's kind of the reason why the oceans have so many minerals in it. Yeah. Because of this, because of the basalt being ground up and flowing into the oceans during all these ice ages. So the oceans are also demineralized. So if we revitalize the ocean, photosynthesis in the ocean and on land, is going to make us potentially short of carbon dioxide that may limit plant growth. Wow. Plants actually live on carbon dioxide. Wow. The more carbon dioxide they have, the faster they grow. Some greenhouses 
put extra carbon dioxide into the greenhouse to sharply boost plant growth. Wow. So the idea that carbon dioxide is a pollutant mm -hmm. is like saying your food is a pollutant. Right. Yeah. And there's and there's so many different angles too. And you're doing a lot on uh, in DC, right? Or trying to get how how or actually I should back that up. How are you getting the word out about this? How are you trying to well, let people we're know? We're doing events and um, we're sending out emails and reach. We sent books to politicians. Mm -hmm. I've sent my venture consultant up to DC twice to hand out books at congressional offices. I met a wonderful congressional candidate in 2022 mm -hmm. who was running for Congress. He was a Dallas native who was running in upstate New York, and he came to Dallas for an event. I kind of co-hosted it, talked to him, gave him a copy of my book. He read it, loved it, and said, you ought to call this the green real deal mm -hmm. because we use green photosynthesis to solve the problem. It's not a matter of building short-lived, unreliable solar power or wind generators. It's about restoring the earth to health and increasing photosynthesis. So that's Brandon Williams in upstate New York. If your listeners want to do something good, go find him on the web and give him a donation. He's, he's in a district that's kind of a purple district. So mm -hmm. He won, won his primary against a, a backed deep state hack kind of politician. He's a good, faith-filled, decent family man who's not out to get rich being in office. Love he that. Made, he made money on his own. Fantastic guys. So strongly. Anyway, we're trying to build a coalition. He wants to make my program the GOP platform. Love uh, it. Whether we can succeed at that. We're campaigning hard on that. Hmm. And uh, although officially we're nonpartisan. Right, of course. Because I'm not really happy with either party on all the issues. My voting pattern is to vote for the least bad. <laughs> because I think because I think even the Republican candidates vote in favor of deficit spending. Mm. Personally, I think living on borrowed money that you have no ability to pay back. Is what bankrupts do. Yeah, so many good things there to unpack. I something that that you said about the the green real deal is a potential topic or title for a book. I kind of like it. And as your publisher, you know, you can go back and change. <laughs> we can always do a second version. <laughs> well, we might. I love to get might real. Have to do that. <laughs> well, we could. Unfortunately, one congressman has already got a website, Green Real Deal. Ah, well then we'll but stick with the Get Real Alliance. <laughs> it's not a good program. Well, we've got Get Real About Climate. My plan is long-term for Get Real Alliance to be a, a core host for a whole bunch of websites with a Get Real attitude about all kinds of things. Oh, I love that. Get oh. Real About Politics, Get Real About Health, mm -hmm. Get Real About Retirement, Get Real About Faith, Super all cool. kinds of topics. But... Uh, I'm full of ideas. My website, fullofideas.com. That's exactly where I was about to go. What Tell us about what fullofideas.com is and, and how did well, that come about? It's an invention company that I started over 20 years ago to serve as kind of a holding company for my ideas and to say that I had a company instead of just me as an inventor. Mm -hmm. And my long-term goal has always been to be a group of inventors. Mm. that kind of work with me. I think teamwork makes things better. It's like my book got dramatically better with performance publishing's help and bringing in a co-author and editors, and people just how to improve it. You know, everybody needs an editor. Yes, so agree. <laughs> everybody, you know, needs somebody else to bounce ideas off. Yeah. You know, a man by himself, doesn't get that stabilizing force of other people saying, wait a minute, what about this? What about that? So collaboration and teamwork. So right now we're trying to raise money for FY Group LLC. There's an opportunity if somebody's an accredited investor 
to get it at an absolutely fire sale price because we're not trying to put a premium price on our valuation because we want to do related party transactions and get key people vested with the equity they've been promised. Mm. So the higher the valuation, the more expensive all that is. Sure. So, so we, and because we're in an early stage with no products and everything early on, you can argue that a raw idea, even if it could be worth a trillion dollars, it's just a raw idea that you and me talk about has no value. That's true. Not until it becomes something. Yeah, you have to invest money in it. And so we're asking investors to pay a tiny amount of money for a slice of equity and agree to put in much more, about 18 that we're asking. We think the equity slice is going to sell for about $2,000 for a 0.2% interest. And we're asking people to put in $18,000 of tax deductible expense contribution to fund us for a year so that we can get a lot of work done to be able to raise money at a much higher valuation sure. next year with more patents filed and write-ups awesome. about the inventions. Everything costs money. It does. It does. And I definitely... Without yeah, I was just about to say, and I definitely say anybody who is listening and interested to go check out that fullofideas.com and see where you can get involved. Um, I want to just wrap this. Uh, we're running out of time and I want to be sure to to kind of wrap it up. But you said something about collaboration. And I do have to say we were so incredibly honored to help publish this for you and bring it to life. And a big shout out to Kimberly Kelso Hawkins, who was um, a, a huge collaborator on this project to to help with bringing it uh, the writing to life. and. Uh, in in partnership with you. So um, all that to say, I do want to, the show is called The Power of Authority. And I always ask, you know, how are you leveraging your authority? And, and part of that is a, a play on words because I wrote a book called The Power of Authority. And I do believe that you can't spell authority without author. So David, you as an author now, how would you say you are leveraging your book to build your brand, to build your your mission and all that you're you're pushing for with this Get Real Alliance? Well, I'm really trying to save the world and we're just getting the books out. You know, my venture consultant is out in California right now, getting ready to have a booth at this show called the Healthy Soul Summit nice. to get books out there and get information out there. We've done a bunch of events sharing books and we just keep pounding away. I've got a great email marketing firm that can send out a lot of emails. So we're going to do that and have events. And we're really excited about that. And I've been blessed with so many great relationships. And one of the relationships you and I have had lunch there, is Matt mm -hmm. Hamilton, local yokel barbecue and grill. Yeah. They're in McKinney. And I'm actually one of the owners. So I can use that space for events. And mm -hmm. so beautiful people, event place, beautiful, a beautiful event space. And we're really excited. We're going to have some events there this fall. So um, anyway. well, you, you have to keep me posted because we live local and I definitely want to do whatever I can to support you, David. And um, I love well, working. It's going to be you. a fun evening. We're actually going to do several events there for different causes and efforts. But uh, anyway, I think well, people can sign up on getrealliance.org okay. and be a okay. subscriber and get notification about events. Okay. If they are local here to the Dallas area, I know you've got a national audience, so. Well, let knows? me give everybody your info so that we can uh, be sure they can get in touch. So getrealalliance.org is where you can go to learn about some of these events and all kinds of things that, that David's doing with the Get Real, um, not just uh, with climate change, but with other things. Um, but also check out getrealtv.com where there's a bunch of good stuff that's coming out here soon. And then, of course, the invention site business, uh, fullofideas.com. If that is something that you're interested in learning more about, go there. Um, we have to wrap things up. But, David, any last words to uh, for those listening that are either considering writing a book or considering doing something to uh, help along the lines of what your book's about with climate change? What advice well, would you give? Well, my favorite quote is Edmund Burke saying, all that's needed for evil to prevail 
is for good men to do nothing. So don't be one of those many that anguishes about how you can make a difference. Make a difference. Every difference counts. It could just be a dollar to a charity. If you give Get Real Alliance a dollar, that lets us send out 100 emails to bring people in and spread the word. So please go to GetRealAlliance.org and give. Give a monthly donation. We desperately need support to fight this evil push to destroy the modern way of life. Take care. Thank you so much. And I think he said it best when, you know, go out there and make a difference. We can all do something. Uh, we don't have to be a scientist or an inventor like David Munson here, but you can do something to make a difference in the world. So until next time, thanks everyone for joining and go out there, make a difference. so much for listening to the Power of Authority Spotlight. If you are a successful founder, entrepreneur, business owner, or leader that's getting results and making a difference, and you'd like to be on this program, please visit performancepublishinggroup.com forward slash podcast to apply. That's performancepublishinggroup.com forward slash podcast. Also, if you got something out of this interview, please share this episode. Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag, the power of authority spotlight. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content, so make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing. Your thumbs up, ratings, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our websites, performancepublishinggroup.com or michelleprince.com. And follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.